London's the name, champion of the free. Free beer, free fags, free blind mice, free anything, me. What about this air, eh? Fantastic, isn't it? My dad reckons it's the best air in the world down there at the Elephant, because you can see it. <laughs> well, you know what you're getting, don't you? Oh, <coughs> oh hang on, I think I've got a lumpy bit here. <coughs> God blimey, is that the date already? Do you know what? It must be three weeks since dear old Aunt Min popped off and left me her little house. Yeah, God bless your Aunt Min. I think it's lovely. Trouble is, so do some of my old schoolmates who like to use it as a DOS house. No, it's not. But I tell you what, the only one who managed to get his plates of meat under my cane and able so far was an old schoolmate of mine called Radio Grimes. Radio Grimes. Do you know, he was hero at a secondary modern school because during biology he had a frog. <laughs> but with radio, see, I was, I was more like a victim of circumstance. Yeah, it all started when a bird named Deirdre Whitaker knocked me off my bike with her jam jar outside Woolworths. And she decides to give me the kiss of life. <laughs> now, that Deirdre must have learnt the kiss of life out of the Kama Sutra. It's got to be the first road accident where the crowd started applauding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, old Bill broke it up. Typical. So I arranged to meet her later on that night in the Freemason's arms and hopefully continue the treatment. There you go, Miss. Uh, what do you want? Usual? Yeah, please. Hello, Jim. God blimey, Radio Grimes. How are you, mate? Can't see you for ages. What, you dipped in for a quick frog? <laughs> no. I met your old man at the dogs. He told me you got a little drum at the elephant and this was your local boozer. Yeah. So, uh, here I am. <laughs> I really am pleased I caught you, Jim. Oh, me too, Radio. Yeah, oh, a magic moment, mate, yeah, yeah. But I've got a rather pressing engagement, you see, and a bit of luck I won't be up till next Wednesday week. <laughs> After which we could go into overtime. Oh, Jim, just a couple of minutes. Oh, I've come all the way from Wandsworth. All right, Marco Polo, but make it quick, will you? Jim, I've got a lot of trouble. Oh, well, I'm all right for trouble at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> If I see anyone who needs any, I'll send him round. Will you listen for a minute? If it's money you're after, mate, I can put you in a picture straight away. I am thoracic lint. Skint, potless. I'm not worried about money. I've got plenty of money. Oh, he said that, mate, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wants your autograph, mate. It's Elaine. Me trouble and strife. She's left me, ain't she? Well, I'm sorry to hear that, mate, but where do I come in? Well, I can't stay over there on my own, Jim. Why not? So I thought I'd move in with you for a while. You know, change a scene, take me out of myself. We'll have a few drinks, be like the old days. No, sorry, mate. No dice. No, it's house rules, you see. All guests have got to be of the female persuasion. You know, squeaky voice, wobbly bits on the front. <laughs> As per exhibit A over there. <laughs> now, I'd like to help you, mate, but don't even come under starter's orders. I'll pay you, Jim. No, no, no. Look, money don't enter into it. Look. An Englishman's home is his castle. Now, I don't know who said that, but he was spot on with it. Uh, it was Harold Wilson said that. Now, I think you'll find it was William Shakespeare. It was Harold Wilson, Durham Miners Convention, 1962. It was Winston Churchill. He said we'd fight them on the beaches because every Englishman's home is his castle. Right, well, there's your start of a ten, you lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not going to sort my love life out. Nice to see it, Radio. What are you going to have? A pina colada. I think she said, oh, a shame. <laughs> she said, of the pina colada. Yeah, but who's going to pay for this? You or me? Jim, listen, you'll be thanking me later when you've got her on the couch round your little love nest. Yeah, well, it don't work. You've got to give me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Only if I can come and see fair play. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah, but I'll think about it. Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you by any chance be Mr. Jim London? Uh, London? Oh, no. Never heard of the fellow now. <laughs> I tell you what, he must be an awful famous person to have a whole city named after him. No, sir, Murphy is the name, Diggin is the game. Now, if you excuse me, I'll just take me wee Doc and Doris over to the wee Colleen in the corner there and all, top of them all, and all and all. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You'd be surprised how many uh, winning numbers never get traced. I thought we got lucky this time. Ah, well, there we are. They forget to put their address on the coupon. <laughs> London, you say? Jim London? Oh, well, that's me, isn't it? Yeah, I was messing about earlier. It's me brains. I'll tell you what, I blame the stuff they put in the water, you know. Yeah, me teeth are fantastic, but me brain's gone rotten. <laughs> <laughs> How much do I win? <laughs> oh, thanks, lads. Quite all right, lady. Break the good news. <laughs> <laughs> What's he laughing at? Has he seen his boat race in the mirror or something? If you pull that ear off, I'll take away your blue Peter badge. <laughs> I'm sorry. He always laughs when we get to this point. You see, you haven't won anything. What I said at the bar was just my way of getting your undivided attention. I think it's a dirty, rotten trick. Oh, but clever. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. Very clever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should get together sometime, us lot, you know. You and the lads, Bill and Ben here. Great company. <laughs> what are you doing for Halloween? <laughs> Let's stop wasting time, Mr London. We've got a lot of other calls to make in the area. You see, we are a family firm of bad debt collectors. Oh, no, Jeffrey. Don't say the milkman's put the heavies on me. Oh, bungle. We are concerned with Mr. Aubrey Winston Morgan, who borrowed the sum of £40 from the Acne Marsh Finance and Double Glazing Company. Aubrey Winston Morgan? Oh, that's old mad dog Morgan. Aubrey Winston Morgan? Fancy him being called that. God. Well, I mean, I mean, Winston's all right, isn't it? But Aubrey's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> now then, Aubrey. <laughs> Until the mist's clear. That's what the doctor says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, all about that. Yeah. Keep, keep breathing, mate. In, out, in. Yeah. You guaranteed Mr. Morgan's loan, didn't you? Yeah, well, he, he wanted to buy a moped so he can go and visit his mum. Where's his mother live? Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry, it's it settled up before he goes. Oh, yeah, old mad dog, he's as good as gold, yeah. Well, yeah, he's a white man. <laughs> in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Mr. Morgan went to prison for 12 months last Thursday for a hit-and-run accident involving the moped and a policeman. Oh, well, that's typical, isn't it? I mean, old Bill always wandering round in the road, isn't he? One of them cops it, old mad dog gets the blame. The policeman was in Boots the Chemist at the time. <laughs> well, probably took mad dog by surprise. I mean, it's the last place you expect to see one, isn't it? Anyway, we are here to collect the £40 plus £20 interest plus £40 collecting fee. That's £100. Did you hear that, you two? 40 plus 20 plus 40 equals 100, just like that. That's education, that is. Go to school, I used to tell them, but you think they'd listen to their mother? Yeah, why didn't you listen to your mother? I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm getting confused. I haven't got £100. Oh, then perhaps you'll accept one of these little booklets full of useful tips for people who can't pay. The Defaulter's Bible, I call it. Can you read? <laughs> Every man's first aid. <laughs> Fully illustrated. Education again. They would not listen. It's got what to do when your legs get broken, or your arm, or if you fall in the river. It doesn't tell you what to do if you're holding a bag of cement at the time. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, all. Glad you're back with us. <laughs> oh, this is silly, this, I mean. How do I get into this? Listen, where am I going to get £100? Oh, I hate doing this, but it's the only way. Oh, come on, lads. Look, look, 
I ain't gonna do a runner, honestly. I might be stupid, but... Well, I'm not stupid, am I? <laughs> Hang about, eh? Sorry. <laughs> Radio, listen, listen. You can stay around my gaff, right? Bed and board for 100 nicker. Listen, I'm... I'm desperate. Oh, Jim. You don't know what this means to me. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. We'll have some great times together, eh? Yeah. Cheers. I'm 21. Single. Incredibly beautiful. And normal. And I've been stood up by a puff. <laughs> Well, she were you. I don't know why we couldn't stay till closing time. I was just beginning to enjoy myself. Oh, yeah, so was I. I haven't had so much fun since I've had my tonsils out. Yeah, hang about. You've got visitors. Oh, no, that's all right. No, that's my sitting tenant. I've sort of inherited him with the house. Oh, so you get some reddies off him, do you? Reddies? You're joking, aren't you? I mean, he never paid me Aunt Min any rent, so why should he give me any money? Oh, here on radio, talking of money, he won't let me down, will you? Huh? If they don't get paid by Wednesday, by Thursday, I'm going to become a burden on the national health if I'm lucky. <laughs> it's not funny, mate. It's no joke. It's my body you're laughing at, my future. This little body. You think I've looked after this so that Aubrey and his brother can do a trampoline on it? <laughs> or their mum sits there knitting a pair of almond rocks like they do on the guillotine? <laughs> Oh, now you're getting morbid. Come on, let's have a beer. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, cheers. You never met Elaine, did you, Jim? No, mate. No, I ain't seen you since you was married. Last time I see you, you was happy. <laughs> she was like a little Dresden China doll, Jim. Almost flawless, but not quite. What, you mean she was a bit cracked? <laughs> no. I mean, she had her faults, like uh, she didn't like working in the shop. Oh, you didn't know I had a fish shop over Wandsworth, did you, Jim? Radio, you're a constant source of surprise to me, mate. I mean, first a frog and now a fish shop. <laughs> Mind you, I suppose once you swallowed a frog, it's sort of in your blood, isn't it, really? <laughs> the aquatic side, like, you know? I loved our little shop. She hated it. Then one Saturday after closing, we had a bit of a Barney. And she said to me, you shouldn't have married me, you should have married a blooming mermaid. <laughs> I can see her now, standing there with a bucket of cod's heads. <laughs> I'm leaving, she said. And she's gone. With a bucket of cod's heads? <laughs> no, just a week's takings of my new jam jar. Well, I, I try to carry on, but every time I see a bucket of cod's heads, I start to cry. <laughs> Well, I suppose it affects a lot of people that way, mate. <laughs> Still, there's nothing here to remind you of back in a cod's edge. Oh, well, I'll go to bed then. Right. Uh, well, where is my bed? You're sitting on it. <laughs> this ain't a bed, it's a sofa. You said bed and board. Well, come to think of it, it might be a board. It certainly ain't a bed. <laughs> Look, I can't can... sleep on this. You can have my bed. Look, it's out there. I'll sleep on a sofa. No, no, I'll give it a try. Well, is there anything else you want? Like what? Well, cup of tea, good night kiss, <laughs> bucket of cod's heads. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate, it's a bit out of order, wasn't it? Look, go on, you go to bed. Good night. Dear Deirdre, I am um, really gutted. <laughs> about tonight. Yeah. Dear Deirdre, I am double gutted <laughs> about tonight. Oh, it's beginning to flow now, isn't it?
Oh, oh, I don't believe it. Um, hmm, brother. Um. <laughs> I'm thoroughly ashamed of myself. Oh, Deirdre, it, it, it wasn't your fault. I was, um, I was just writing a little note. Nothing is that bad, Jim. Well, it was developing, like. I'm a grown woman and I acted like a stupid schoolgirl. And I'm going to stay here until you say you forgive me if it takes all night. Oh. oh all night? Oh, um, all right, then. You've, uh, you've come prepared, then. Well, that we're not being prepared, I always say. <laughs> Are you going to unpack or are you going to wait for an interval? <laughs> oh, uh, those are just a few little uh, peace offerings. Oh. I do hope you won't be offended. Oh. <laughs> They're all practically new. in a little and let the hem down. Have you come round here in the middle of the night to wind me up or what? I mean, is this supposed to be funny? Oh, Jim. I'm trying to show you that I understand. I know we can never be more than friends, but we're all God's creatures. Now, why don't you let me try and help you? Yeah, because I don't need any help, do I? I mean, like, what, what, what happened in the pub? Tonight was a big mix-up, honestly. Honest, honest. It wasn't my fault. Scout's on her. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll explain it to you over breakfast, eh? Then you're not... Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? <laughs> you just stay there. I'll, uh, I'll just dim the lights a little bit. I can't sleep, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about what you said. A good night kiss or a bucket of God's heads. My God, you're weirder than I thought. <laughs> oh, God. Look at it. People are going to say, what happened to your right? And what am I going to tell them, eh? Tell them it's gone into mourning for your brains, mate. Look, look, I'm sorry about the right-hander, but you have got an unfortunate habit of lousing up my love life, haven't you? I mean, if I'm going to have you round, I might as well get in line with the old Toms down the vets and save myself a lot of aggravation. <laughs> well, perhaps I can go round and see the bird for you and put her in the picture light. No. No, no, thanks, mate, but no. That Deirdre is bad news to me. Yeah, You know, nothing's gone right since I've met that girl. No, the relationship is jinxed. No, I don't want to see her anymore. Pity. Yeah, it's a shame, really. Yeah. But have you ever got a feeling you're not going to get on with someone? The thought did cross my mind when I collected this last night. <laughs> Look, I said I'm sorry. Look, why don't you just go and phone your old woman? She might be sitting at home waiting for you to give her a call. About time one of us got lucky, isn't it? I'll give it a try. There's a money box by the phone. <laughs> no, it's all right. I've got some money. <laughs> Hello? She's back! Hello, Boo-Boo. <laughs> it's Daddy Bear. <laughs> Ooh, I'll get a cab. Ooh, put two bottles on ice. Yeah, the see-through cowboy outfit. <laughs> and I'll be Hitler! <laughs> oh, I love you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> She still loves me, Jim. Yeah, so I'll gathered. Mine Fiora. <laughs> I'll go. Hello? Who? Ah, oh, he said he doesn't want to see you no more. Your bad news. Yes, I'll tell him. Who was that? That was Deirdre. She says you can go and get... Ah, oh, no, I don't believe it. He's done it again. But you did say... Shut up. Look, not another dicky bird out of you. Listen, 
I'll phone you a cab. I'll see you in the Freemasons' arms next Wednesday. And don't forget to bring the money. We'll talk about this later. When I'll stop crying. <laughs> Jim, Jim. Radio, I thought you let me down, you know. What are you being such a tight sob with the money, innit? Oh, well, it's been a matter of life and death. I couldn't let common sense prevail. Right. Oh, thanks, mate. Mm. Here. I've had a word with Deirdre and all on the phone, sorted it all out. Yeah, she'll be here in a minute. Here, and one wrong word out of you, Radio Grimes, I'll jump all over your head. I won't speak at all, if you like. Even better. Now, about this money, seeing as you was round my gaff just one night, well, uh, we'll call it a loan, OK? Oh, Jim, you're such a mate. Oh, don't start all that again. <laughs> there she is, look. Hello, Jim. Hello, Radio. Has Jim told you all about the mix-up? <laughs> oh, of course, you were there, weren't you? Haven't you got sexy legs? I saw them in Jim's sitting room that night when I thought you were a bit... I thought, phew, what a waste. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jimmy shy. Isn't that lovely? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. It's just that whenever I open my mouth lately, I seem to make somebody unhappy. Oh, now, you mustn't blame yourself. Musty Jim. Well, why not? It's a free country. <laughs> I don't think you realise that some people have finer feelings, do you? Oh, what happened to your poor eye? Oh, well, look, let's forget about it now, eh? Look, why don't we just kiss and make up? Good idea. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, hang on, it didn't include him, did it? I mean, you wouldn't kiss him if you knew he ate a frog once. <laughs> did you really? A frog? I love people who do daft things. I think you're a very interesting person, Radio Grimes. Oh, uh, well, we're gonna have to drink, Deirdre. I can't get Radio One, cos I'm sure he's got to be on his way. Oh, no, I'm OK. I'm in no hurry to go back to an empty house. <laughs> she hasn't done it again. You poor thing. What are you gonna do? Well, I was gonna ask Jim if he wouldn't mind. You're joking. No chance, mate. Ain't staying with me. Now, if it was Deirdre... What a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Why don't you come and stay with me? <laughs> it's only a small flat, but as long as you don't mind a squeeze. Oh. Deirdre, I forgot to tell you, he hit a newt once as well. Yum, yum. Come on, we go and get your things. You don't mind if we leave you, do you? Poor lamb. He looks as if he could do with an early night. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's cabaret time. Oh. Oh. I hope you realise it's highly illegal, demanding money with menaces. Not menaces, dear. Promises. <laughs> Keep your voice down. We don't want the whole world to know, do we? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty... Are you listening? Twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty... That bloody radio. Radio? What radio? He's bugged! Try me, Mum! It's the fuzz! Run for it! <laughs> Thank you.